Welcome to Release. This video is about setting up the connection between your Released account and your Xero account. To prepare to make the connection in your Xero account, have a look in your General Settings menu. You need to make sure you've got your tax rates and charts of accounts loaded in. If you need any help with that, you might like to talk to your accountant. You may also want to consider having a look at the invoice settings and setting up the looks of your invoice, because they will be controlled by Xero once the connection is established. The other thing you need to set up is your tracking. So let's click into tracking and have a look. You need one tracking category called property or something similar, and then one option within that for each of the properties in your released account. Ideally, it should be a one-to-one -one connection. What tracking does is when you load an expense invoice or bill to pay in zero, and then it synchronizes through to released, it can be filed against the correct property and can be used then to feed the actual figures for property budget wash-ups and other financial reports. Um, so it's fairly important. Um, you can, if you've already got transactions and you haven't been tracking them previously, under your advisor menu, you can do a find and recode and recode the tracking on those items. Maybe talk to your accountant if you need some help with that as well. So once you've got your tax rates, your chart of accounts and your tracking set up in zero, and maybe also your invoice settings, you are ready to connect your released account. So here in my release settings, before we connect, there's a couple of things to think about. Um, if you have done any data entry prior to making this connection, you'll need to have a look at the names that you've used in the contact area. If those contacts also exist in Xero, they need to be an exact match. If they aren't, you'll cause duplicates, and they can be resolved by merging the contacts on the Xero side. If you do merge contacts, a common mistake is that the contacts you've used in your release account are the ones which become archived. So it's handy to go and check your tenancies and any invoices that have already been issued to make sure that they're connected to the current version of the contact after any time you do a merge. The other thing would be if you've set up tenancies and they've got a rent template, you've probably also set up a tax type and a chart of account. And this could mean that your income and expenses area has already been populated by some invoices. You might like to double check those before you carry on. So once you're ready and you've checked your contacts and you, you know that you're all good to go, make sure you've got the correct company selected here and then push connect to zero. Then you can continue and connect to zero. Now I'm already logged into my zero account. If you're not, then the program is going to take you to the login page and require you to put in your email address and password first, and then you can choose the company to authorise the application for. Now, it's really important to get this part right. You only get a one-time opportunity, um, and if you make a mistake, sometimes you can't fix it. So once you've established a connection between a company and release and a company and zero, there are permanent connections within that database. The release company can't be disconnected from this zero company and connected to a different zero company anytime ever. So, but what you can do is you can disconnect this zero company from your release account, start a new release company and connect that to your zero account. If you're not sure, have a talk with us. But basically, it, once it's connected, the, the released account has been used and it can't be reused. So you want to make sure you get this bit right. Also, if your company doesn't show here in the list, it could be something to do with your user access levels in zero, and you might need to see your account administrator to get that sorted out. So I'm going to push authorise. And then the next step is to choose a sync from date. This is the date from which the systems will share all invoices and credit notes. If you have a lot of history in your Xero account, perhaps you've been using it for many years, you might like to start from the beginning of this financial year or even last financial year. Um, if both accounts are brand new or fairly new, you can remove the date entirely and that will share absolutely everything. Um, I'm going to start my connection from the 1st of February this year. By default, it's always offering you 12 months in the past. So I'm going to save and continue, bearing in mind that nothing prior to the 1st of February 2016 that's in my Xero account will come into my release account. So now I'm up to the tax type reconciliation. This has happened because I've already got a tax type that I've set up in my settings menu of released, um, and I may have used it somewhere, so I want to connect it to the right tax rate from Xero. So here I can see my options. These options relate to New Zealand, but wherever you are in the world, you'll have your own tax rates that apply. Um, and you just want to choose the correct one. Typically, you'll have only used this on income, so you should be connecting it to your income, your tax on income code. Or if you had no tax in your area, you might have set one up called no tax, in which case you'd choose the ap applicable from no GST or zero rated or, or your local equivalent. 
Once the tax types are reconciled, any charts of accounts that you'd already loaded into the account need to be reconciled as well. So in this case, I'd set up one for my rent income. And I'm just going to connect that to my rent receive chart of account in Xero. If you archive any tax types or charts of accounts that have already been used and released, then those invoices will become draft invoices once the Xero connection happens. And they'll need to be edited before they'll be able to be shared between the systems. And any tenancy templates where you've already set up the rent will need to be edited to use the correct ones that are now existing in your Xero account. So I'm going to save and continue here. And now my Xero sync has started. I can tell that my Xero is synchronizing because of this little blue spinning circle up in the top of the screen. Once that stops spinning and turns into a little green tick, it means the sync is finished. And any time you see it spinning, it means it's sending some kind of information to your Xero account. Your Xero account is going to send a once a day feed through to your released account. So that means overnight, every night usually, everything that you've done for the day in Xero will be pushed through to release. But you can make it happen anytime. So in release, anytime you add or change a contact or an invoice, that will automatically synchronize to release straight away. Uh, sorry, to zero straight away. And you can see in your zero integration status area down here, you've got little buttons that help you, these blue ones, with any particular item you'd like to sync through from zero, or you can use the green button to sync all data. These are our points of integration. So while we're here, let's have a talk about those. Um, your tracking categories are controlled in zero, and you can apply them here in your released account. And we'll look at how to finish setting up that tracking um, once this synchronization is finished. So your accounts is your chart of accounts, and those in your tax types are completely controlled by zero. You can't set them up in here. You can look in them. So if you click into chart of accounts or tax types, you can see a list, but you can't actually edit them from your released account. Your contacts will be synchronized. So any contacts you had in zero previously and any contacts you had in released before the connection will now both be in both areas. And as mentioned before, you want to double check your zero account uh, as soon as this sync is finished to make sure there's no duplicates. Um, and then finally, invoices and credit notes will be synced between the two systems, even if they don't relate to a property. So wherever property tracking is used, it's going to pull that invoice into the property file for you. But other transactions that exist in your Xero company will exist in your release company as well. So you might like to explore the user settings that prevent people from seeing things that aren't related to properties. So if you have wages and property transactions happening in the same account, um, for privacy, you can change that setting in the user. Um, have a talk with us if you need some help with your user settings. The other options that you have in your Xero integration area here is whether or not you use the Xero invoice numbering or the release numbering. With the Xero invoice numbering, which is the default, any time an invoice is created in your released account, it'll get a released invoice number. Then it will synchronize and pick up the next number from zero and display that from then onwards. This is great for people who, who maybe invoice out of both systems and want to keep the same set of invoice numbers. If you switch to release numbering, your released invoices will have a released invoice number, which will be different to your zero numbers. Um, so you can choose which way you like to go there. Um, and then the other option here is the invoice status. So you can have have approved or awaiting approval. Only approved invoices can be emailed automatically by release. So if you choose awaiting approval, the invoices will still be created on the correct days, but you'll need to actually send them yourself. Um, and that can be done in bulk from zero. So it's not really a big deal. Um, if you'd like to check them first, you could switch to awaiting approval for a little while. And once you're confident that the connection's working and, and you're not needing to make any changes, you might like to switch back then to approved and let them be emailed automatically. So once the zero synchronization is finished, we can see our little green tick up the top of the screen. If I click through on that, it's going to show me um, all the details of my most recent sync, and I can go into this message history and see previous syncs. This is my first one, so I'm not going to have a history in there. Great. So now that that's done, the final part of setting up the zero integration is to finish setting up the tracking. So you'll remember we set up tracking in our zero account. We now need to link it to our company and our properties. So if we click into Manage Companies and then click into the company that we're working in, when we scroll down, we can see this zero integration area. I'm going to tell it I want to use my property tracking category. And I get this option here of updating invoices. Now, I'm going to leave mine on Do Not Update Invoices. And the reason for that is that this is a new account. I don't have any invoices, so there is nothing to update. Also, if you've never used property tracking before, you still won't have anything to update. So if you've just set that up for the first time, leave it on Do Not Update. 
If you were using property tracking previously and you want to update the property on all of the invoices and you've already been into the property and done it in there, um, then you can choose this update the associated property. I'm going to leave mine on do not update and save. And then the other final bit of setting this up is to go into my properties. I'll do the first one, but you will have to do every property that you've got. Um, go into my city office tower, I can go into my property details on the left menu there. And when I scroll down, I've now got a property tracking area. Um, so I can go and choose the corresponding tracking code. And if I had invoices in zero that were already using property tracking, I would definitely want to choose to update that property on those invoices. I'm just going to save mine. Um, so you go through and you do that with all of your properties. And once you have connected each of them to their tracking category, you are now completely connected to zero and ready to start work. Thanks very much for watching our video today. I hope that it's helpful for you.